What up, cucks? Um, you know, the last video that I made, uh, it had to be made about the conference. But I do want to say a few more things um, that have nothing to do with the conference itself, but with the booking decision of what happened at the conference, right? Okay, so let's go through this real quick. Um, on Friday, I think it was, on Friday, on SmackDown, one of the SmackDowns, maybe last week or the week before, uh, Cody Rhodes, I think it was last, last week, right? Cody Rhodes comes out, basically, and he just says... You know, Roman, I've put a lot of thought into this. Well, first on Monday, Seth Rollins begs Cody Rhodes to, to choose him, right? Then Cody Rhodes on Friday comes out and he says, Roman, you know, I've thought this through. I've talked to my advisors and family and friends, which is, by the way, hacky. You know, it is what it is. So then, like, The Rock comes out and the implications are that Cody Rhodes is going to give his spot to The Rock. Now, everyone, including myself, thought, all right, this is great, but, you know, we don't know for a fact, right? And for me, until the Wikipedia article says Cody Rhodes versus whatever then I don't, he hasn't made a choice, right? Until Michael Cole tells me what the main event is, it ain't real to me, right? And even then, it might change. So the implications were that The Rock was going to take the spot. Now, I knew the responsibility that The Rock wouldn't take the spot, right? Because, like, it kind of it kind of came out of nowhere, and I knew the fans would, would you know, would, would revolt, right? So I'm not sure what happened, and I don't really care what happened in terms of the booking element, but I do care about the way it was presented. So, long story short, Cody Rhodes goes in the ring, shakes Rock's hand, they hug, and then Cody Rhodes leaves, right? Any person who sees this is going to assume that The Rock and, and Cody had an understanding, right? And The Rock and Roman are just doing a stare down. They don't do anything. It's a complete waste of time. Then all of a sudden, they have this stupid um, conference that they announce, right? Before that, we have Raw. Cody Rhodes comes out. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Blah, 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 blah. He's not, he doesn't even say all that because he comes out and he gets interrupted by Drew McIntyre, right? Drew wants Seth. Seth wants Cody. Cody wants who knows, right? It's just very annoying. So... Uh, and the the, mat, the the event ends with Cody beating Nakamura, which is a complete waste of time, and then being attacked by uh, by Drew McIntyre. That's all I saw because my feed cut, goddamn Hulu TV, right? But apparently, I think um, someone came out to I got like to save Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, maybe I don't know. So I'm thinking, all right, maybe they'll do like a triple threat: Seth, Cody versus Drew, which it is what it is. But you know, like whatever, I'll watch that match, I guess. But like, if I miss it, it's whatever. Like, if, like if that's the first match of the night, let's say, and like. I start watching with something too late. I'm not rewinding. You know what I mean? That's the level of that match. So, um, but then, inexplicably, during this this press conference, right? Cody Rhodes comes out and it, essentially he plays the role of a sniveling brat, right? The Rock, he's being a little bit callous because he's kind of playing like a semi heel, right? And Roman Reigns is a heel, so they're talking. They shake hands. They they're basically saying like we're family. But we're gonna have a match. To determine who's the number one. And The Rock does a good job, in my opinion, of putting it over as the biggest main event in WrestleMania history, right? Which it very well would be. Now, this is the, the time that Cucky Rhodes thinks is appropriate for him to interject, right? In other words, after what The Rock just said, which is that this match is the match. It is the, the, the perennial WrestleMania main event. When you think of main event, you think of people like The Rock, and you think of people like Roman Reigns, and ideally, you think of two people like that resting each other, just like Rock and Hogan. It has that same feel, right? Now, with that being said, Cody Rhodes comes out and he says, I never made my choice, like a little bitch, right? It just, it, it came off really pouty, and in my opinion, it did not make Cody look strong at all, right? And this is not helped by the fact that on Twitter, he's like, just trust me. He told the fans, just trust me, right, like a few days ago, which is like code for like, I'm going to ruin this, this thing, right? So now, okay, sure, the fans that want Cody Rhodes to be in the main event are happy, and arguably they're a little bit happier than, than they would have been if Cody Rhodes just straight up said at the Rumble, I want Roman, right? But let me put it to you this way, right? What about the fans that don't want this, right? Now, they have more reason to hate Cody Rhodes as a character because his indecisiveness, right, in kayfabe at least, his indecisiveness led to a complete waste of time of The Rock and Roman Reigns having this showdown and saying they're going to fight each other and even The Rock's promo, right? So The Rock is understandably pissed because Cody Rhodes has taken his, his title shot, right? And more importantly, he's taken the big main event, right? Now, The Rock, as everybody knows, is the people's champ, right? And a lot of the people do want this match. So the fact is that Cody Rhodes pretty much pulled the rug from under our feet, right? Now, I know that the neckbeards... The hater, the hater detractors, the lover and friends like that, are out there laughing and saying, ha ha ha, look at all the people like the hater, they're not getting what they want. But that's the thing. I don't really care that much anyways. I'd prefer to see it, but if it's on the card, it's on the card. Like, it is what it is. I, I'll, be, I'll be okay watching Roman Reigns anyways. I, to be honest, I think he's going to win either way, so I, I don't think it matters. But that's, that's not here or there. 
What about the booking decision, right? What about like, like, like the question, why would Cody Rhodes do this? So I asked myself when this circle jerk first started, the point that I was trying to make was why would Cody Rhodes give up his WrestleMania opportunity, right? Because that's what happened, right? Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble and he's like, nah, I don't need it. Uh, I'm going to go, right? I'm going to, and he specifically said, let's not forget. He said to Roman, Roman, I'm going to take everything from you, whatever the hell that means. But uh, presumably it means the title is going to be gone and you're not going to be tribal chief anymore, right? Uh, so The Rock comes out. So he basically tells Roman Reigns, and by basically I mean explicitly, he says, I'm going to come after you, Roman, but not at WrestleMania. So what was the point of this, right? If Cody Rhodes is going to change his mind a few days later. In other words, what happened these last few days? This has to be explained. Now, of course, some writer is thinking about this right now as we speak, and he's like, wow, we really left that hole in the, in the storytelling. So rest assured that Friday or more likely Monday, uh, Cody Rhodes is going to come out and he's going to cut a promo explaining what made him change his mind. But why didn't he do this at the press conference? That would have made more sense. If he said, look, I'm sorry, Rock. I know that I gave you this opportunity, but I'm, I'm taking it back because I changed my mind. I hope you can understand, but this is my opportunity. I'm doing it for my dad, right? For my daddy, I'm doing it for my dad. And then the Rock could have easily, the same way, justifiably gotten upset and lay it the smack of down on Cody Rhodes like he did at the conference, right? But this didn't happen. What happened instead was Cody Rhodes said, I've made my decision. What? I thought you made your decision on Friday. I thought you, I thought when he left and he told Roman, I'm going to come after you, but not at WrestleMania. He basically made the decision that he's going to go after Roman Reigns at a later time, which means he has to use his WrestleMania shot against Rollins, right? That's the, those were the implications. You know what I mean? So with that being said, what changed? Maybe Cody Rhodes is like, you know, I, he, even a simple explanation like, you know, I was going to give The Rock the opportunity because uh, I wanted to see the match as well or whatever. But then the fans brought me back to life and I wanted to do it for them as well. And that would have gotten a pop and things would have gone the same way. But that's not what happened once again. What happened is Cucky Rhodes came out and basically just said, change my mind. You know, that's basically it. Change my mind. And this is the guy that you want me to cheer for? An indecisive pussy who acts like a little bitch and takes the spot from other people? You know, the, I understand. I understand that there is a, a comeuppance here, right? It's a comeuppance. Like, for example, if, let's say, CM Punk had won the Rumble, maybe that was the plan. Who knows, right? If CM Punk had won the Rumble and this story played out with CM Punk, that would have been great, right? Because The Rock stole CM Punk's opportunity at the Royal Rumble 10 years ago when he beat CM Punk and then went on to, to, to wrestle Cena, right? That would have been a good callback. CM Punk would have been like, you know, the, he could have just come out and caught a promo. You know, Rock, I played you. The same way you came and stole my opportunity at WrestleMania, now I'm taking it back, right? I did it all. It was a ruse. I did it to screw with you. But Cody Rose didn't have any explanation. He basically just said, I decided, changed my mind. You know? And how can anyone like this guy after this? Oh, but Cody Rhodes. And this is the thing. Uh, Big E in the conference, as well as my friend sent me a tweet from uh, uh, Brody Lee's, whatever, Lu Luke, uh, Luke Harper's wife, who said, like, the kind of man that Cody and Big E are is that they, they drove five hours the day after Christmas, right, to be there when I tell my son that uh, Brody Lee was going to pass away, right? And Cody, Cody, like, hugged the son as the son cried, and they went and they flew kites together at the beach, right? Good for him. I got nothing against the man called Cody Runnels who plays the character Cody Rhodes. I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a fantastic human being, and if he isn't, I hope he can become one. I ain't got nothing to say about that, you know? I respect every wrestler in WWE because at the end of the day, these are people that have a job that centers around entertaining me and entertaining you. You know, that's another thing. A lot of people don't get it because they, they get too personal. Just like my friend who sent me the, 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 the screenshot of the tweet or just like Brody Lee's wife. They get too personal in this. Now, I understand for some of them it's personal. Like for her, it's personal. Cody was there when her husband died. That's a big deal, right? But let me get to this other point, cucks. You ask yourself, is Cody Rhodes a good person? And I always say Cody sucks. He can be a great guy. I don't care, right? I have no personal opinion on Cody Rhodes the man. I hope he's good. I hope Triple H is good. I hope Vince McMahon is good. I don't give a damn. I judge only the characters that I see. So when I see when I say Cucky Rhodes, I'm talking about the character of Cody Rhodes. I got nothing to say about the man. And when I have something to say about the man, I say it straight. 
And that, that's happened in the past. Where I've said, like, Cody Rhodes, and I meant Cody Runnels, right? Cody Rhodes used Tony Khan. That is an element of the man himself. That's not the character. The man, Cody Rhodes, used Tony Khan to put himself over and put himself in this position. Shame on him, but Tony Khan is a cuck, so he deserves it for, you know, going along with this nonsense. Instead of running a wrestling company that is not influenced by the Young Bucks or Cody Rhodes or anybody else. He should be his own company. But anyways, the point is, as I told my friend, I said, this is how you know that Cody Rhodes sucks and doesn't deserve it. You know this because in order to convince me that Cody Rhodes should be in the main event, people like my friend and Big E himself, they, their argument is, well, he's a nice guy in real life. Fantastic. I could give a shit if he's a good guy in real life. Let me tell you something, cucks. In a few weeks, we got the Super Bowl. I don't care except I plan on betting some money on some prop bets. That's the only reason I'm going to keep myself entertained uh, during the Super Bowl at my friend's house. He has an annual party. We go every year. It's a good time, cucks. But imagine if the announcers in the NFL said, you know what, guys? Pat Mahomes is a great man. He, he devotes time to, you know, children's charities. And there are NFL players that do that. And good for them. They are good men. However, this has no bearing on whether they deserve to win the Super Bowl or not. The fact that Pat Mahomes might give money to charity and might sacrifice and donate his time to charity and, you know, the fact that John Cena does make-a-wish things, right, has no bearing at all on whether he would make a good champion, right? Because wrestling is presented as a meritocracy, right? It's presented as a sport. In other words, the only thing that should matter is which one of these guys is going to make the most money? And the answer is, The Rock is always going to make more money than Cucky Rhodes, right? So, in order to convince people like me that are on the fence and or don't like Cody Rhodes as a character, people have to make arguments like, well, Cody Rhodes is a really nice guy and he would make a good face. I don't care about the face of the company. Shut your mouth. Who is the face of the company during the Attitude Era? Stone Cold who beat his wife? You know, who was it? Exactly, right? Who gives a damn? The point is, I don't give a damn. I don't take my social cues from the WWE champion. You understand what I'm saying? I don't care if the, if, if the WWE champion or the Super Bowl winner cheats on his wife all day. Michael Jordan, notorious cheater on his wife. I could give a shit. You know, LeBron James, as far as we know, a faithful man. I could give a shit. Now, if I had a son, I'd be like, hey, son, be more like LeBron and less like Michael. Of course, right? But in the context of being a fan, none of that is important. And you know that there is no argument when the argument becomes with Big E said, Cody Rhodes is a great man. He and I spent time with uh, Luke Harper's uh, son. Great, bro. You're good guys. Nobody's doubting that. I mean, I think Big E and Cody are dummies, but like, I'm not saying they're, they're not good guys. I'm just saying that neither of them, especially Cody Rhodes, deserves to be WWE champion. And with that being said, that's all I got to say about that, cucks.